Hey everyone, and welcome to the Infinite Respawn Podcast. I'm Chicken. I'm Oak Tree. I'm Griff. I'm Bucket. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Oh man, we're here, and it is a uh, E3. No, 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 that's not a thing anymore. It's Summer Games Fest time, um, which is E3, but without the E3 part of it. It's it's game announcements in June is pretty much yeah, what it is. Yeah, the June. June. Did you find it interesting that people E3. showed up to a wait, theater? Wait, wait. To watch the announcements, and there was nothing on the out. There was like no actual games to play, nothing like that. Like there would do people do it out of habit now? You just show up at this time of year and like expect a thing. I I guess. (laughs) I've been doing it for so long. It's like yeah, this is. I just. I'm called to this. I guess. I guess. Good for Sir Jeff Keeley for being able to get a bunch of people to show up in a room for the announcements. Yeah, especially for that (laughs) one. Like that one was. Move my mic up so I hope it doesn't make too much awful noise. But yeah, like the they did the Summer Games Fest one, and then today before the show, um, we watched the Microsoft show. PC game show is starting in about half an hour, and then tomorrow is Capcom and Ubisoft. So I mean, like we're still getting all of the accoutrement, but I feel like the the Summer Games one was like underwhelming. For Jeff Keighley put so much effort in. It's like did did you make this? Like kind of underwhelming because you expect to have so much more for the Game Awards in December. I feel like his announcements at Game Awards was better this year than what we got for Summer Games Fest. Well, that's so, what I'm saying. So like, do you right. want that to be you, the major you, thing? Is everybody tunes in December and this is kind of a throwaway event? Or I mean, I mean or they just don't like everybody just does their own thing. Why? Why go to Summer Games Fest? That's like, true. What's the point of that? I mean, Capcom's it's... literally doing their own thing. They gave they they like let somebody else show well, some stuff. But if you want to see it, you need to wait for theirs. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo I... does their own. Capcom does their own. Microsoft yeah. does their own. Pretty much everybody does their own. And and I get that it costs these companies a good amount of money to go to a show and 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 take to do this type of stuff. But I think that's what made E three originally was very unique in the fact that it was just the industry people that were going in and playing the games and all that. And then they opened it up to the public, but it gave us an option to be able to actually play these games. That's the reason we have cons in the first place. And now we're to the point because of 2020 up happening, pe- cons are starting back up, but the companies aren't going back into the cons. And I think that's the reason you had a problem with E3. Um, and knowing Jeff Keeley, he probably knew exactly how much it cost every one of those people to be at E3, so he just undercut all of them <laughs> to be to do his summer g- game fest. Yeah. You know, because he's a good businessman. I'm not a big fan of him personally, but I, I, he is a good business guy. Oh. Um, there is... Uh, we, we will not read off every single trailer that they showed off at all of these I events. I love them. But, um... Yes. There, were, there were some good things and some bad things and some weird things. Uh... I don't know. There wasn't really anything for me personally um, that stood out from the Summer Games Fest thing. I know a lot of people were excited about stuff like the the Mortal Kombat one. They showed off new Mortal Kombat. It was... I felt kind of eh about it. Um, Which in the past I've been pretty amped about some of the Mortal Kombat stuff, but that one didn't really do anything for me. I I like the the fact that they're they're basically just like like restarting uh, again. To, to me, basically, sounds like it's like, well, we, we kind of wrote ourselves in, into a corner for this, so <laughs> we, we need to... It, it, it's kind of like, it, it reminds me of how, like, like when, when DC do, does the comics, mm-hmm. where they, they write themselves in, into a corner and go, well, well, how the fuck do we get out of this? Uh, fuck it. D- d- delete the universe, start again. But, I mean, I was talking to Oak about that. that that's perfect, though. Yep. Re- restart it every ten years. Fuck it, because apparently this is supposed to be an alternate timeline with one character from the previous st- timeline into this one. And then they're just restarting it over. So, you know, in 10 years, you do it again. You do another timeline. 10 years, you do another timeline. You just reboot the series every 10 years. It's a fighting game. What the fuck are you going to do? Like, well, there's, I, there's not I much mean, to that's it. that's true. I mean, and, and because, you know, fighting games back in the day didn't really have a plot line. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, there was a the lore there. Don't get me wrong, but we didn't have the cinematics and all the shit that was that we have now. And so I think that you 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 know now that you've gotten through eleven, then then you start over at one and and move your way through. I think you know no, I, I uh, like the, the idea. Old of fighting games it. also used to vary in their, their stories depending on what what character you went through and, and played as too. That's true. So like That's each true. character got their their own story, their their own ending. 
instead of like a, an overarching story, which I, I personally kind of miss that where it's like, oh, well, I, I can go through with, with each character and, and it, it feels a bit different, not, not only because of the, the character's play style, but be, because the, the story focuses on them as you play through it. In the, the newer fighting games, it's like, no, you're, you're going to play th this character at, at this point when, when we say so. It's so we, we have like one, one arcing story, and it's like, eh. So now, the replayability is not the quite story the same. mode like once and th then I'm kind of done. Yeah. Well, they probably want it to be more about the multiplayer side of things anyway. The online and such. Um, I, I, I was kind of excited because the very first thing they showed, and I was like, wait, I thought this game was canceled. Because two years ago, we've got Prince of Persia in this awful 3D looking PlayStation 2 version of the game. And it just looked awful. And then. All of a sudden, we get a trailer for Prince of Persia, but it's like the platforming, side-scrolling version of the game, like a very old-school version of Prince of Persia. And it made me excited because I liked the graphics that they had set up. Um, and I was like, okay, well, at least it looks like Ubisoft went, okay, fuck these people. We're going to create, go old-school with it so at least some Prince of Persia fans can can go back in and play. Um, I liked I liked the way that the style of it just looked fantastic to me. Um and they, you know, and then going into to Mortal Kombat, uh, I, I like the idea of, like I said, with uh, Chicken and I, we had the conversation. And I like the idea of rebooting, um, for sure. Uh, now, y'all play P Path of Exile 2. I didn't. I, I played it several years ago. Or pa pa Path of Exile, not Path of <laughs> Exile 2. So the sequel was, does this really need a sequel? I mean, they've just been adding on for however many years it's there. Is two necessary? Like, you're going to have to have an in game on one, right? I think they're just, like, I think they're just upgrading Path of Exile. Upgrading? To Path of Exile. Yeah, kind of like what they did with Overwatch to Overwatch 2. Oh, new graphics, yeah. new engine, new everything. Battle Pass? Uh, Okay, first of all, you people don't understand the amount of microtransactions in that game. It makes it, it makes Activision Blizzard look like a charitable company. For for mm -hmm. Path of Exile, I don't. I've yes. never played it, so I have oh, no like, idea. Their cosmetics are expensive. You have to buy stash spaces. You have to buy so many things in that game with money. Mm -hmm. No thanks. But that's how that game survives because it's entirely free and it's a really solid game and they work so hard to get that game constantly upgraded and expansions and balance like all sorts of things and, and it's got a crazy skills tree too yeah like they have a really good gameplay loop and people absolutely love it and it's a smaller company i'm gonna say smaller company but grinding gear games is a new zealand based company who could just kind of do things on their own so you know, yeah, they've they've got to charge a little bit for their cosmetics, but their cosmetics are usually like over the top and uber fancy, and you can buy different way, different spell looks and things like that. Like, uh, I, for an example, I don't think it's actually one, but you can buy different costumes for your skeletons if you play the summoner class, or you can make your uh, volcanoes look like blue fire instead of red fire. Like, you can do all sorts of different things when you. Uh, so it's kind of like Warframe, but in a. Yes, but that, that different in an type action of style. RPG style, yes, right. In that respect, I mean, but in both both games seem to have a lot of oh yeah fan they have base, huge there. huge fan bases. I was actually surprised that we didn't see like a Warframe two or something <laughs> come out. It's got to be coming soon at some. Yeah, point. I was say, I think eventually. I think eventually. Uh, looking through the different stuff that's here. Uh, We've got a new Sonic that's kind of updated, the Supersonic, uh, the Sonic uh, Superstars. Um, I like the fact that they're upgrading old school style games and actually making them like the old games were versus the <laughs> recent Sonic that we've got that was an open world. I like that we got both genres, you know. Um, Let's do so things. they showed off yeah. that Crossfire game again, the VR one. Like, what? Well, stop. It's it's straight trash <laughs> i i know they were showing it and it's like mm, you don't know that i would have shown this twice because they showed it at the sony uh, store or show as well and it's like and it could be i could be wrong but when they put crossfire on it after the last crossfire game that came out and just absolutely 
you know, was horrible. Um, yeah, it was a little bit of an issue with that. But um, <laughs> Lies of P, uh, they announced that there's a demo to it as well. I'm gonna watch it. Uh, I, play that I one. haven't. I haven't downloaded it, but I, I need to. Uh, I need to play it. I haven't downloaded. I, but. I've played. I played for about an hour, hour and a half into the game. Uh, I'm not normally a Souls style person, but I really enjoy this one. I like the kind of steampunk look of the game. Um, the mechanics feel really good. Um, with the exception of I keep hitting the X button thinking it's going to be an action button of some sort, but what it is is you've got little items you can use and it uses those items, so I accidentally keep using my health uh -oh. um, ah. when I don't need to use my health. Um, but uh, once I got the con get the controls down and stuff, it'd be alright, but the 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 actual art style is it's an absolutely beautiful looking demo. Yeah, it looked really pretty. Oh, yes. um, like, not my gameplay, but I will watch Chicken play it. Mm -hmm. I will wish that it was my gameplay to be able to play around in that world. It was very pretty. Well, and I, I like the fact that it's that that they're retelling Pinocchio, so it's a something everybody's kind of familiar with, and it's neat to kind of see the reimagining of of the characters that um, most of us know uh, as well. Uh, they there wasn't a whole lot. A lot of like medieval games too. They did like um, Throne and Liberty, which is a terrible name for a game, by the way. I, I don't know. There's just nothing about it that grabbed me. And they right after that they showed off Warhaven, um, and it's just I don't know. They felt a lot of the games that they have shown off, even in the Sony one, um, have a lot of like samey qualities. And I don't know if that's because there's like a homogenization that's happening in the industry right now or what, but I, I don't know. I was just like, uh, how many of these games are the same? <laughs> it's because right now everyone's trying to find the game that they can make stick. Mm. But especially with mul when it comes to multiplayer multiplayer games, everyone's trying to find something that will stick. Like Apex Legends, hardcore, it's stuck. Like, it landed, and it took off, and it is now here. Mm. Everybody else is trying to find theirs. Well, then, and that was the thing with Legends. The thing with Apex was the fact that when it first started, it hit real hard at first, and everybody was like, okay, I'm done with this gameplay. And then they revamped the game to make draw people back into it, and they, can, and they continue to play it. Mm -hmm. It's like the number um, three game on Steam for, like, the last several months. So. Mm-hmm. Well, they did do a couple of multiplayer things, um, like Party Animals, which we've seen a few times now, has a release date for September 20th. That's um, many people did Gang Beast, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, yeah. If it's not, it looks like the exact same physics engine. <laughs> um, and then there's the, the Crash Bandicoot multiplayer thing. Um, it's 4v4, and that's June 20th. So there's some, like, cartoony, fun party game stuffs, too, which, I don't know, maybe that's where everybody's leaning right now, is a fun party game. I like the idea of playing that. I mean, because you can get your group of friends together and play. Like, you can either get three of your friends together with you and go out and play against other people, or you can get eight people together and be able to play for something like the Crash Bandicoot thing. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think it would matter how much that one costs, though. Um, I didn't and, see a price point, but... Yeah. There's probably not one. Not yet. Not yet, yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, it might yeah, be, because it comes month. out June 20th. Yeah, it's like two weeks. Which one yeah. is it? The Crash Bandicoot? Yeah, game? the yep. Crash Team Rumble. Yeah, that's what it's called. Crash Bandicoot Team Rumble. There we go. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what the price point on that one is. I think I don't even know what I would want to put it at. Forty bucks. It's Crash Bandicoot. Those. I don't think I'd pay more than forty. It is forty bucks. Hey, look at me. Oh, it's actually thirty bucks. Forty bucks is the del deluxe edition. There you go. Is the regular. That's that's doable. That's definitely doable. I would hope it'd be uh, around the same for party animals. PS4, uh, PS5 only. Really? Yep. For the Crash Bandicoot one? Yep. Yeah, that's surprised not it's not on PC as well though. I know, that's what I'm surprised about. I was like, damn, really? No PC? Alright. No. Because some of their, well, I don't know. Did the other, yeah, the crash, the cra the newer crash when they redid all the things, I think that ended up being on PC too. Mm hmm. But, I mean, I'm not surprised it's not on Xbox, but. 
They showed more... Well, they showed Alan Wake and Warhammer again, which we just saw at the Sony uh, show. I'm excited for the, the Warhammer one. I'm sure you are. It I'll, looks, I'll it looks really good. Fresh on bugs. Uh, it says this winter, so... This winter. Who knows? So, on that one. Christmas Eve time, I guess? Uh, I've Ooh. heard that there it might be a co-op function to it, too, so... That's cool. Mm. They did show one uh, the John Carpenter's Toxic Commando is first of all that name is terrible, um, but it the gameplay of it just felt so. You know how like when you're scrolling web pages sometimes you'll see an ad for a mobile game where they're just like one person or a car or people are mowing down a horde of zombies. That's kind of what that looked like to me. They, they should have just called it uh, John Carpenter's Zombies from the the looks of it. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's super intense. I don't know. I I looked at it and I was like, this looks like an arcade game at best, and I have no interest in it. Yeah, I did, it didn't really look great to me. Mm -hmm. um, like, if I was able to get out of the car, it'd be different. Um, but, you know, just running zombies over is not... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, you, you kind of want that every once in a while, but I don't know. It just, it felt like it didn't have any depth to it. It was just a zombie horde shooter uh, slash driver. Runner over. Uh, it is. I mean, that's fine. It just, like I said, it felt like an arcade game to me, which is what that would be, so. It, it feels like John Carpenter went to, like, a movie, movie company and tried to get them to pick up an option on, on the script he had set up that had the same plot line. And none of them would do it. And then he went to this company and went, hey, I've got this idea. And they'll go, oh, that'll build a perfect game. Let me go ahead and we'll build a game out of that. We'll be, we'll be able to stick your name on it. I mean, that, you know? that does kind of feel like they're trying to put the name on it to get some extra attention. I don't know if it's going to work for them. We'll see how it plays out in the long run. I don't think it has a release date, though. So, uh. Mm -mm. Uh, we got to see some more footage of Spider-Man 2, um, which I mean, we'd already saw some of it at the Sony one, but uh, this, you know, they showed a little bit more details on it, gave us a little bit more details um, with it as well. Um, and then that led into one of the most absurd things I've seen so far out of the I whole thing. I told you there was, was some weird stuff. Um, Pal, Pal World, which think Pokemon, open world, but the Pokemon have guns. Yeah. Um, it is one of the strangest things I've ever seen. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that one. Like when it first starts, you're like, oh, wow, this is cool. Neat. Oh, it's a different version of Pokemon. That is so cool. Look, look at all the exploring and the traveling. Look at all the different <laughs> not Pokemon. Oh, my God. He's got a gun. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he's shooting other Pokemon. Yeah, uh, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. I don't know where I fall on that one. Uh, like it makes me feel like it's uh, a poke. It's like I can't remember what that game was. It was a game that had like dinosaurs with guns and whatnot. Uh, dinosaurs with guns. Dino Crisis. It's an old game. No, no. not Dino Crisis. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't but it, it's it's weird. Like they just gave Pokemon guns. Uh, Turok. Says, Go for it. No, not Turok. The dinosaurs didn't have guns in Turok. <laughs> I mean, there there were guns and there there were dinosaurs. So. <laughs> That's so weird. That's not the That's same as dinosaurs combo. with guns. <laughs> dinosaurs uh... with guns in the game, and you you could play a, a dinosaur in the multiplayer. Yeah, you could. Uh, they showed off the Lord of Re Lord of the Rings Return to Moria, which. I'll be honest with you, I had, I was at work and I had it on mute while I was watching that and I glanced over at it and I was like, did they do some updates for Deep Rock Galactic? Because it looked like the little dwarves <laughs> wow. from that. Oh, wow. wow. What a stereotype there. <laughs> so what, do all dwarves look the same? No, I just looked over and they were climbing a ladder and I was like, oh, is that, is that, is there an upgrade for that or an update for that game? Uh, that, really? Because it looks it like this goes backwards in terms of graphics wise. I don't know. I'm not I don't know that it goes backwards. It's darker. It's like if you turn uh, the lights out in Deep Rock. What do they yeah. want out of this game? What do they, what do they it's, want? It is 
my my guess is it's, it's a survival game under underwear because you can build and everything inside. Yeah. But I think you have. But I think it's a multiplayer co-op survival game inside the the mines of Moria. Yeah, because it's returned to. So I guess you're you're trying to reclaim it, which means you'll have to kill the the things that are in it and and then rebuild and things like that, make it habitable yeah. again. That's that, that's I mean, at least what I got out of it. I'm yeah. interested in it. If if it's that, I'm interested in it. If I'm, I'm iffy on it, if it's anything else, just because I, I love the idea of living in that world and survival and being underneath there and all that and and seeing what they do with the mechanics. But if it's something else, I don't. I really don't know how I feel about it. Because that's the way it was presented to me. So, I don't know. <laughs> uh, what else did they like, talk about there? Um, I don't know. Some of this I didn't actually get to see because, like I said, I was at work. Um, like a Dragon. Uh, is that a series that you played a game from or two? Oak? Uh, no, not that I played. Okay, uh, I can't remember. There was something Dragon that you played and liked, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, you're talking about, uh, is it Into the Dragon? No, Some, that would be the, the that would be the old Bruce Lee movie. <laughs> right? I don't know, there's, um, it's something similar to that. And I, I know can't, what you're talking about. It was a first-person it. shooter with the main, main character's name was Wang. Yeah, was that guy. Wang joke. Wang. Yep. Um... We're yeah. on the same page. Just neither one of us can remember the yeah, name. Yeah, I don't the remember the name. You're the one that played it. <laughs> I know. They, they announced the, the Twisted Metal TV series. Yes. Yeah, they, yes, showed, they, the, they showed a trailer for it. Uh, I, don't uh, I am not sure how I feel about that one. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Uh, I think it's supposed to be weird. I mean, yeah, because it's Twisted Metal, but I, like, I, I think I'm with Baka. I don't know how I, I don't know where I land on that one. I mean, it's supposed to be about a bunch of just people trying to, to win a wish from someone and, and drive around in, in cars and, and shoot each other and blow each other up. And it's like, yeah, here's the trailer of Sweet Tooth and another character. And they're in a casino. And it's like, yeah. Well, if you watched it and listened to it, it was because at one point the... I can't remember the actor's name. Shot at him while he was on stage, like just started straight up shooting at him while he was on stage doing something. So Sweet Tooth tracked him to this place to kill him. But it was uh, a misunderstanding. Why, why was he, he on stage in the first place? Why, I don't why was maybe know. he won a race? Maybe he cheated and won the race, and the other guy was pissed, or I don't know. It's it, it's just a trailer I, I, I feel like if it was Sweet Tooth that, that won so the race, he he has wished for some really fucked up shit in the games. I mean, it'll probably be real fucked in, up. In, in the first game, he, he just wanted a paper bag. Wow. His character's name is John Doe. He's the only character in all the episodes. Mm. Well, that starts oh. airing on July 27th. If you're interested in that. Uh, one of the actors, damn, I can't remember. One of the characters from Brooklyn Nine Nine is in it too, Griff. Oh, well, that's uh, a pretty large cast. So, shit, it's the other detective lady, Rosa. Oh, oh, okay, nice. I, I wonder if she's going to be an outlaw. She's quiet. Oh. <laughs> Bog is that? Oh, huh. I, I, I mean, it, it's been funny. It's like, okay, she she played a cop in the, that show. Now nah, nah, she's going to be outlaw. Hmm. <laughs> I see where your mind was at on that one. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, they showed off a game called King Arthur Legends Rise. <laughs> that the whole time I was like, "Is this Dragon Age? Is the Dragon Age? This doesn't look good. What is this? Is, is this? It's, it's not. It's, it's not Dragon Age. But the character that they have on the front of it looks like they took Alistair and Cullen from Dragon Age and mashed him into one character, and that's their poster boy." <laughs> What you have exactly. to know about that game is when you read the top and it says it's for PC and mobile. Yeah, that's what I thought. That That is a huge trend right now is games that look like they're mobile games or they are mobile games are also getting PC and console launches. That is where we're at in life right now. So, 
and then like right after that they showed off the the wayfinder one which is another like sword and shield thing so that one's not on mobile but it is free to play so it's gonna be what, what kind of game is it wayfinder um yeah. I, I think it's uh maybe it's free to play battleborn so it's multiplayer kind of deal Hmm, is it a third person MOBA? I want to say. I watched the trailer once or twice. I want to say it is, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Hmm. I mean, it's got five people. Paradox um, had two games that they showed off, by the way. Uh, Paradox makes things like. Um, Battle Chasers, Rune King, and Dark Siders Genesis. What? Okay. That's who made Wayfinder. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, they had one. Where's Wayfinder at? There. The, um, if a little further down, <clears throat> there's one called Immortals of Avium World or something like that. Um, it's an EA game, which so I'm leery of anyway. But mm -hmm. that one comes out July 20th. But the look of it, it's it's a first person fantasy sci fi. Please you know ignore the mean? plane that's apparently taking off at our house. <laughs> Good lord, I don't yeah, know what's happening I upstairs I right here. now. <laughs> I have no um, idea what that sound is. Sorry, you're going to hear it on the show. My it's, bad. It's a, it's a chair. Is it? Uh, With wheels on it? Oh. Okay, anyway, sorry, back to the important things. My bad. Uh, but it's it's like a fantasy sci-fi. It's very interesting with magic and more kind of modern, or I say futuristic. The, the PC gamer thing preview is starting, by the way, 10 minutes early. They're doing a bunch of uh, early shows. I have interest in the, the Immortals thing, but it is an EA game, so I, uh, I'm i also gonna be very of leery of it. That's going to be one of those, I'm going to wait six months before I ever touch that yeah, game. Yeah, I'm going to wait is. to see what, what critics say and what everybody else says when it, when it launches. All those people that are actually going to risk it and try it day one, and then I'll see what happens from there. Yep. They did like uh, I was looking at the, the Nimble Giant, which is doing the, the Star Trek one, and like the, the list of games that they have on Steam, like none of them look, look very good. So, uh, most of them could be like mobile games almost. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's something around that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it could be a uh, mobile PC game. <laughs> Everything well. else is. Oh, th this game Griff wants. Kill it with fire too. Oh, that's the one. I I played the first one. It's hilarious. I assume yep, that you have a definitely... flamethrower and there are spiders. Yep. Oh, you get a frying pan, too. You have oh, to get well, to the point yeah. that you have those. But yeah. But it's Before... kill it with fire. Why wouldn't I have fire? You have fire. Well, you, you, do the eventually. you do eventually, but not when you start. Hmm. Oh, you can get abducted by aliens. Okay, what is this game about? I'm sorry. I have a frying pan and fire and... Abducted that's new. I don't think I could get a abducted by aliens. Oh, I'm watching the little trailer thing. Oh. Okay. What the hell? Oh, you gotta kill alien spiders. You gotta clean out alien houses of spiders. So is it like Power <laughs> Wash Simulator but with spiders? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you could, so you could pick you everything up in a room and throw it to help spiders. Their worlds deal with spiders. Or like House Flipper, I guess. Oh, wow, you get fucking grenade launcher and those spiders are big. Mm. Well, I don't, I don't like spiders, so... That's why you said it's your game. You get to kill them. Exactly. You get to just torch them, run around with a giant flamethrower, screaming. Uh, <laughs> well, as far as the the other like Summer's Game Fest show, they ended with the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, um, which is the next part of the Final Fantasy VII game that, that's coming out. It's it's coming out next year on two discs. Nah. First of all. Wow. Two discs. We're actually going to put it this? out on discs. Um, to be fair, for my console games, I would prefer to have discs, but uh, two discs. I don't. Um, sure. More power to you, I guess. Like, how big is that game? What is but the it, file size it, on that thing? 
Dinosaurs. But all all the games now are downloaded to your system on the new consoles and everything. So why would you need two discs? I don't know. And and most games nowadays are just a licensing code. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. Because because I'm gonna give. I'm gonna say two words. Oh. Uh, Marketing ploy. I guess. Not nostalgia. Uh, I mean, the, the original Final Fantasy, but it was like, what, three disc? Four disc? I guess so. Well, a yeah. lot of them were four discs. Sure Some of them were three. No, the, the, the one I have is a three, I think. Uh, the first one, the first remake is one disc. This one's going to be two. And the third one's going to be one. So that way it's four disc again for the whole game. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of Final Fantasy, the latest rumor is that they're uh, remaking Final Fantasy X next. And uh, it, yeah. it'll be released uh, for the 20th, 25th anniversary in 2026. 25 years later. Huh. Well, I mean... I mean, I'll be I'm, here. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you, I, the moment they're like, yeah, we're reading, I'm going to be like, all right, I've bought it. Come on, I've bought that game like six times now. You think one more time is going to break the bank? Right. Buy one game six times over the course of 25 years. Why not? Well, then, then, then keep releasing it and you'll, you'll keep buying it. Especially if they remake it. You better fucking believe it. That game looked so good 25 years ago. See what it looks like 25 years from then. Well, you can see well it might be 25 years before you get the second second or third or fifth part of that game. I know, fuck right? that. They just need to release possessed. the whole thing in one go. We'll They're just doing chop that it up like shit. seven. No, fuck that. Oh, man. Well, fuck um, that shit. From today's Xbox show, there's definitely a game that Chicken was interested in, and they started the show with it. They They're the only one that I was yep. super Fable. sold on. Yeah, so... That the new Fable... Fable yeah. It looks good. The I, I think it's interesting that they have they've chosen to go with the whole big people versus small people thing for part of the for this one. I think um, that's just another one of the uh, uh, the the quest lines. Like I think that's just because there's like you work your way through the story and you have got a lot of freedom you can do, but uh, the main objective bounty boards or whatever send you to specific parts. And I think that's just another offshoot because you've got the tournament, the hob grounds, uh, I think the desert, the forest, all sorts of like little different offshoots off the main path to kind of do whatever. And I think, I don't think that thing is like super important. I think it's just uh, something they decided to show that's going to be a change from the original. Because the, the werewolves that... are still there, the mercenaries are still there. I want to see the Hobbs. Those things are probably the worst enemies you've ever fought in a game. They are so annoying. So annoying. Those little fat marshmallows are so little fucking annoying. Fat marshmallows. Hell yeah, you can just swing on them for like days, and they just kind of roll around and then just flank the shit out of you. This You're it'll like, be interesting too because this is a trial for the Forza engine that's only been used for car games before this. To see what they if it can actually handle um the storyline and all that but it i mean so far it looks like it can i i That's am getting true. old of just these fucking trailers it's like just stop if you're gonna give me one trailer every three years just wait until you actually have something more to show there there i did listen to somebody else talking about this because there's no there's nothing listed like 23 24 was listed on some of them on this one they didn't list anything um, so they're predicting 2025. So we still got a ways to wait on this one too. That's fine. Just then wait. We'll we'll keep <laughs> sitting here going. No, nah, nah, I wish I could see something, and now we the see something, and it's like that didn't do anything for me. <laughs> Give me this fucking game. It did. It, it, it made the waiting worse. Yeah. I know, right? Well, but I think you you've got a lot of people that are like, hey, you showed us a teaser because remember it was just like a fairy flying through or whatever for the original and then that was it to let us know that it was being made and now we've got some actual footage to kind of get us excited a little bit oh, didn't it get eaten by a frog or something yes it yep. yeah. got eaten by something at the end I think it was a frog I don't remember it was, we're, we're it's been a minute patient. Um, the same people that brought uh, Contrast and Happy Few uh, Compulsion Games which is a notice, another studio that um, Microsoft has acquired. 
uh, has a game called South of Midnight. It almost looks like claymation. Yeah, the art style was pretty pretty neat. I think. Um, so it was cool. I want to see what game footage is on that one though, because I want to see how that one plays out. Because there is a difference. Uh, there's a, no pun intended on this. There is a contrast in gameplay between <laughs> contrast and. Uh, we happy few. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to see if this is a new style of gameplay they're trying to get into or if this is going to be similar to one of those others. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was cool. Of course, big Star Wars game was released or released, announced. Oh, um, whoa. Yeah, it was released. Ta -da! Everybody's going out to get it now, um, <laughs> which is Outlaws. Uh, this is Ubisoft getting into the the Star Wars world. Um, or yeah, universe, EA rather. EA no, no longer has exclusives. Nope. That they do not. They screwed that up. I mean, they did. You can't blame, you know, the, the owners of Star Wars with Disney at this point um, for being like, we don't want you to be the only one. And no one wants uh, uh, single player games. Here's a bat Battlefront 1 and 2 where, where we make you buy a bunch of shit and things are uh, unbalanced and broken. Mm hmm. Well, but then they 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 did have the uh, Fallen Order and and uh, Jedi Survivor after people had like like how much of an uproar about the mm -hmm. other ones. Well, and that was after they fired the person that they had in charge of whatever single player when they originally set up and shut down an entire studio. Yeah, this real games they shut it down. That's who was working on it. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. I'm going to skip over the weird one because I don't even know. The that weird was. one? The 33 Immortals. Why 33? Yeah. Probably it's some sort of lore reason or something. It's I'm sure, be. but it's a 33 player multiplayer game. Uh, okay, good luck. I will say it, it's from Thunderous Lotus, uh, Thunder Lotus, and I did not realize this at the time. This is the, It's the developer of Spiritfarer, which I really love that game. It had a really good plot line to it. Um, it was simple to play. My oldest played it too. She loved the game and had really lovable characters. Um, but I don't know how I'd feel about, you know, me trying to find 32 friends to play with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going through a game. I'm going to guess you're well, supposed to put it together like a guild or something. Or um, you, that you just queue up. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Or that. join a server. It's, because it's, Valheim is the same way. It's up to 10 people. And people just turn on servers so that people can play freely. That's true. That's true. I mean, I play those games with my friends so that I know what's going on. Uh, uh, you guys were kind of excited about the Payday 3 trailer. Oh, yeah. yeah. It looked good. It was out in September. Uh, it was good, too. I mean, I, I'd play it. Will I buy it? I don't know. There's friendly fire in that game, so I know you are looking forward to playing it with me. Down in front. We'll everybody. always be on different Down floors. In front. We'll always be uh, on different floors. Don't walk in front of Griff. That is the rule for any game that you play with me that has friendly fire. Just don't walk <laughs> in front of me. Especially if it's first person, because I'm not going to see you coming. And then I'm just going to shoot you in the back, and it's going to be your fault, not mine. Don't give me that little Yeah. Chicken. Yeah. Well, and then yeah. you also have ways of being stealthy in this game. Like in the original, you could be stealthy to try to sneak in and try not to get caught while you were doing stuff and then fight your way out. Yeah. Not going to have you be stealthy at all. That's not going to happen. Um, so you're going to shoot all your buddies. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm not going to stealth anyway, so. <laughs> yes, I'm saying. <laughs> I attempted to stealth in the game, but. It's hard. It's hard not to make a noise in the game. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, or like you, you think you figured out the pattern and then, then the AI suddenly like is like oh no I, I'm going to go ahead and go around this corner even though I, I haven't done it in, in any of the other attempts before hey but, that's, that's just that's just how the game is man people are unpredictable you ever try to rob a bank not speaking from experience people are crazy way to, way to play that off so the FBI doesn't hear you <laughs> FBI yeah him <laughs> Get him. Hi. <laughs> uh, the uh, for those that are fans of the Persona series, uh, Persona Three is getting a remake called Reload. Um, it looks good. Like it does. Like, considering how old that game is, it looks really good. 
It said it's being done in the Unreal Engine, so I, want you, I wonder if it's four or five. If I had to guess, probably five. Most likely. Used all the new stuff, why not? Mm-hmm. I mean, if I don't know, though, because art couldn't be built in five very well. Um, evidently, oh they have problems with that. So, because yeah, well, it's so difficult and there's a learning curve. Idiots. <laughs> I mean, let's be real about it. What is happening with this PC gamer show? I don't know what oh, I watched, yeah. but there was like a, a few minutes skit, and now there's a dude in dad jeans talking to me. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm not even listening to him. I, I have it muted because, you know, I'm trying to pay attention, but that, I'm just, things I'm are just getting waiting. weird. I'm just waiting to see Darksiders. Anyway, oh, sorry. So. Let's talk about the Xbox show. I'm going to ignore Mr. Dad Jeans for a moment. Uh, uh, yeah, you leave Dad Jeans alone. City Entertainment, um, who's been around for hey. years, uh, about their, that's known for their Is RPGs. A, um, we got Avowed, uh, which we've got more footage of Avowed, but the only thing they showed us before was a little teaser trailer of it in the past. Um and all of us were like, wait, is this Greedfall? What is this? Yeah, it looked like uh, another I mean, Greedfall, but it wasn't. I'll be honest, it looks like Skyrim, if Skyrim was released 10 years ago. Wait, though. <laughs> <laughs> but wait. <laughs> but wait, the, once the gears start clicking in the head, it's like... Uh, I didn't think it looked terrible, okay. but I mean... I don't think it looked terrible either, but... I mean, Skyrim doesn't even look terrible, but I remember that show so specifically and the people from Bethesda saying the same thing that they did in the Starfield thing. They're like, see those mountains over there? You could go up to those mountains. <laughs> Anywhere you see, you can yeah. walk to. And in the Starfield, they're like, you see that moon up there? You could go to that moon. Anywhere you can <laughs> see, you can get to. And it's like, bro... You've been telling me that shit for the last 15 years. I get it. If I see it, I get to it, okay? More way <laughs> think our film is way too ambitious, and either we're not going to see it for a very long time, or when it comes out, it's going to be very akin to, um, what was the, the other one that, that fucking flopped? No Man's Sky? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, we'll find out in too? September because wow. Starfield comes out in September. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's got a release date, doesn't it? He was... it does yeah, September the original release date was November last year. Yeah, oh, yeah. Was... okay. So they, they have a release date. How many times has the release date been been pushed back? Chicken oh. This one, ruling. this one has only been pushed back once. They originally said November, and then they went nope, twenty twenty three. So they didn't give us a date until they they were sure that they could do it in September. Um, I still think it was done in November. It just wasn't up to par. It's probably not going to be up to par, and I hope they delay it, too, if it's not. Again. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I have a feeling they're going to launch it anyway. Although, like, I've said it before, Bethesda tries to lean into the, oh, it's Bethesda charm. It's Bethesda weird bugs. Look at that. It's not charming anymore. You've pushed that too far. Like. Punk 2. Nice. Yes, Chicken, I know you're very excited. They just showed off Frostpunk, too. He's been playing oh, yeah. Frostpunk a I've, lot. I've been, I've been hit on that Frostpunk. Like, I, I played it's it so a while good, back, though. and then I've just been, like, playing it, trying to beat it. I think it, I think it took it. Maldus, like, a year to actually beat it the way he wanted to anyway. Like, get all the stuff done the way he wanted it to do. Yeah. Because uh, he's so particular. Um... Sea of Thieves is getting uh, a new series of storyline. Um, they've done the Pirate's Life in the past, um, and now we're moving forward with the Legend of Monkey Island for the next set of story, and it starts on July 20th. I'm super excited about this because they had an Easter egg for Monkey Island in the Pirate's Life stuff, and I'm hoping they've learned their lesson and put all of the stuff inside of an instance. Um, where it was only like three of the six episodes of the Pirates' Life. Yeah. Uh, that before I'm hoping they're putting all of it into an instance. That'd be great. Um, so we're not having to worry about possibly getting killed while we're trying to play through a, a plot line. Um, that looks doesn't look complicated, but it looks like it's going to be fun. And I don't want to get screwed up by some people being assholes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I like I like how Sea of Thieves is kind of started playing into their their sandbox style where they can just make stories inside of it i i still hope that we get to see an ice biome soon so that we get a, something different we could get new new armor for your so. ship fronts so mm-hmm. icebreakers hell cool. yeah turn it into an icebreaker i don't That'd even play neat. that game anymore but that would be pretty cool to look at so 
Oh, this other game, the one with the dude naked on the beach, was a like a dragon game too. Yeah, yeah. it is. That's what I said. Yeah. The Yakuza like a dragon. Yep. Yeah. So, naked uh, on the beach like a dragon. That's what he is. Well. He's naked he, on a beach. He is. He he's naked. Do, 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 that's the whole naked on the beach. Do 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 do. Uh, <laughs> oh. It's I would say that looks really cool, but there's really nothing there except a naked guy on a beach. I mean, looks cool, right? Naked guy on the beach looks uh... cool. All right, Griff, I got it. <laughs> I still need to play the other um, Like a Dragon. I just I started it, and it, I was not feeling it at the time, so I need to go back and, and try it. That's early 2024. Early, mm -hmm. quote unquote. Who knows when that is? You've got plenty of uh, Yakuza games to play till then. Yeah, there's only what like seventy five of them. <laughs> Eleven of them. I actually don't know. I just know yeah. there there's several. I think it's there's zero all the way to ten, right? Maybe. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of spinoffs. Uh, so getting slightly distracted by the the, the trailers. That's okay. Uh, That's why I've got mine way up here. <laughs> I can't see it. They did. Well, I need to watch it when they do Dark Siders Four. I hear you. They showed a new uh, location for Fallout seventy six. You can now go on vacation I, to Atlantic City. I'm impressed by their uh, sticking to it. I mean, when was it released? Two thousand eighteen, nineteen. It's been. I want to see seventeen, wasn't it? I don't know. That long ago? I don't remember. It wasn't 2018, October 23rd, 2018. Okay. So, it was so. 2018, that was its early access. Um, even though it wasn't early access. <laughs> it should have been. People would have been more forgiving if they had said it was early access. They still would have bitched because they were like, you're a major company and you put this thing in early access. Well, that's also true. I think, yeah. I guess there was like a no way. Well, mm -hmm. I think that would have still given them a little more leeway than full launching a game that was that broken. They should have done the same fucking thing that uh, Sea of Thieves did. Create the base game. It doesn't have to be fancy. If you're going to support it for a long time, make sure the foundation runs. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. Everybody, if, if your people's biggest complaint is that there's not enough stuff in it, then you're good to go. Like, all you do then is just keep making stuff and putting it in there and people will keep playing. But yeah. if your biggest complaints are your game runs like trash, it crashes, can't do anything, can't make progress, it's horrible, then then you're really kind of suffering there at the beginning. You have a major uh, microtransactions. Yeah, <laughs> like... He, you could pay this $100 a year thing. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, just just make sure the foundation of your game works first first and foremost every time uh, add shit later if you have to just stop releasing broken shit please stop releasing broken things no they've they've long lost they've long overused their please just do it now i was just saying in general to the business uh, please stop making broken shit a yeah, hardcore nice. survival fps set in the post apocalyptic border zone that's the one chicken was just watching it's very the one I am it. watching current. Uh, what? No, it's not. The oh, sorry. The one that I just flipped from was very cartoony. I'm sorry. Uh, I was gonna say this is not. This is like fucking Escape from Tarkov. Yeah, I like, like that a... that we're talking about the Xbox one while Chicken is keeping us updated with the live happenings from the other show. So oh wow, <laughs> most of what That's he's talking lot. about is on the the PC gamer show. Just that is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of fucking like stats statistics for your character yeah that's too much for me well you don't like uh it's a hardcore survivals oh <laughs> like i got right um go again we got uh also another announcement that we ended up with was the new uh elder scrolls online um expansion which is necrom which had a really cool devil looking dude on it I mean, it was cool i don't they he's probably got a name but i, I don't know what his really name is because i don't play that game, game but it looked cool um, so I'm sure there's some ESO fans out there that are excited about it. I mean, another, another Bethesda one that gets a good amount of support, but I feel like ESO had a better release than, um, Fallout yeah. 76. Oh, hundred percent. 
I mean, because again, they he had could their, only they, go one direction. To be fair, they <laughs> had their foundation set strong with the Elder Scrolls. They just had to make it like super multiplayer, and it worked. And you know, and they had uh, like the the PvP aspect was a bit different from most other MMOs. And but I, I think most people do it for the the story and stuff. Like they're they're adding in stories and and raids and. Again, yeah. foundation good, add stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, then we have Cliff. I mean, <laughs> Juicant. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh, so just so everybody's in on the same joke, while we were watching the um, watching the 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 showcase, Juicant comes on, and Chicken immediately goes, "What if this is like Raft?" But you're climbing a cliff the whole time. <laughs> and that's the whole gig. And, and of course, it, after the shot of him with his little cute little buddy, like sitting there snuggled up, you start seeing a bunch of footage of him climbing a cliff. And you're like, oh, wait, is he right? Is it actually going to be called Cliff? No, it's, it's not. But it could have been. It could have. Yes. Could have been. It could have been. Could have been. Would have felt accurate. I, I like the art style on it. I like his little friend. Uh, for sure, very cute. It is very and, cute, little jello marshmallow lizard. Uh, I'm de- I'm definitely interested in. It and I think it's it's a Game Pass one as well. So, but it's not going to be out until next year in the fall. So, got a long time to to wait on it. Yeah, um, but it looks like it's going to be cute. Uh huh. Agreed. Um. We ended up with a game that was, if you've played Amnesia, Dear Esther, or Everybody's Gone to Rapture, it's by the, the group Chinese Room. Um, it takes place on an oil tanker. Um, it's like a little, seems like a very horror game, spooky first person narrative game. So if some you're interested in, I, I, I thought it looked pretty good. Like, like graphic wise, looked pretty good. I, I'm Not interested. a big horror fan. Interested. Yep. It looks like it could have some uh, Soma vibes to it. Oh, I would agree with that. Yep. <clears throat> yep. This game over here on the PC gamer thing, Baka, is you 100%. This is well, probably you and me. Yeah. It is a side scroller, Castlevania esque, uh, bloodstained esque style and game. And you get to be an old st- man with a stylish scarf. It's yeah, like right? Melton. Cir- uh, circus based, where your well, special. Melton does not have a scarf yet. Your, your yeah. special moves. Oh, it's called Ebenezer. Oh, I was literally thinking. Oh, that so it's it Ebenezer like Scrooge. Ebenezer and the Invisible World. Huh. This is why he hates Christmas. <laughs> I hate Christmas. get the truth. Okay. Steam. Demo available now on Steam. Nice. I'll try that. Oh, there you go, Bucky. You can try it out. That is <laughs> definitely not my. Uh, I, need, I need that, that outfit for Melton, though. We got to see uh, some footage Pat from Cyberpunk 2077's Phantom Liberty. Phantom Liberty, yep. yes. Phantom Liberty. Um, and uh, with the Phantom Liberty, um, basically, it, it was really weird because you had Keanu Reeves was the one that was out there. And it's like you've got one shot of his character if, uh, one time in the entire trailer. <laughs> it was in there, but he was like, I'm so glad they're telling this story. But chicken, you said you had an issue with this particular DLC. Yes, um, I want to confirm that because I saw them tweet out on Twitter that with the new release of this, all of the uh, requirements are being upgraded. Like th- even the base game is changing uh, the requirements for it. E- I guess even if you don't own the DLC, the game is going to be much harder to run now. Like, looking at it, we have the minimum specs for it now. Like, it, oh. it wants 70 <laughs> Time gigs to of solid upgrade. St- for minimum, it wants 70 gigs of uh, solid state drive to run it properly. Well, minimum. I mean, about to get a solid state drive anyway. Yeah, so. Uh, How many hard drives can my PC hold? Five. I mean. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mine can hold eight. I don't think I need quite that many. How about I just, you know, I think right now I have three internals and one external that's on it. So, yeah. Get my solid state. Hook up my new Cyberpunk. Let's do it. 
get a super high-end graphics card that I can't afford, but I will, like, mortgage my life for, I guess. No, we're definitely not doing that. <laughs> um, Nugget doesn't need daycare. I need a graphics card. Uh, if, we're, if we're doing that, we're getting a real-life car. <laughs> Uh, another one that we got really excited about uh, when it popped up because it looks so good is they are doing a sequel to City Skylines. If you've not played, if you're a, a fan of City Builders and you've not played City Skylines, um, go ahead and just tell your family you're not going to see them for a while and sit down and play because it's great. But some of the improvements they've done looks like, a, um, first first of all, graphically, it looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, but also uh, looks like they've done some quality of life stuff as well, uh, which is which is awesome. Uh, and it is scheduled to be out October the 24th of this year. So excited about that one, too. Uh, and it's right in the fall and the wintertime. It's when yeah. I have time to sit down and be able to play that yeah. type of stuff, too. <laughs> It's a nice side uh, screen. You can watch a show and play a game at the same time. Right? Uh, if you're a fan of the uh, Banner Saga, the same company, that uh, the same developer that, that created it, is creating a game called uh, Towerborn. It is a co-op adventure, though, and it doesn't... Um, it doesn't have the uh, turn base like Banner Saga, which I'm happy about. I like the fact that, you know, it's more of a uh, look like more of a hack and slash style game, uh, which is nice. Uh, then we get to the one that Griff is very excited about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that we all went, wait, is, is this, this a new Bioshock? Bioshock? <laughs> yeah, like literally, I think everybody's reaction was, is this Bioshock? I can't, is that Bioshock? Is that Rapture? Bioshock Infinite 2? No, it's a steampunk, you know, S kind of deal. It does have very very similar airships and a lot of very similar theming um the the aesthetic is the same as in bioshock infinite basically uh i'm all about it but it it's called clockwork revolution and uh there's a a bad person bad lady that's uh gonna chase you through time and space if you uh i don't know start a rebellion so I, I guess there's going to be the same maybe-ish idea of tears where they can chase you through time and space. I, I think that's why you get with the clockwork part of it, not just yeah. the steampunk version of it, but it's the yeah. idea of being able to do that. And also, like, based on how you do changes the world around you, I think they wanted to go to a similar route that Dying Light 2 did. I'll leave that because okay. I haven't played it. Where uh, based on your choices and your interactions and uh, how you handle things throughout the game, it changes the outcome of the areas as you play through it. Uh, I, uh, and the powers look pretty neat too. I saw them blow up a bridge and then put it back together, like a reverse time after killing the people on it, which is pretty neat. Definitely. Uh, those that are interested in getting an Xbox Series S, there is a now a one terabyte as uh version that you can get that'll be black. That's how you'll be able to tell the difference if you're in the store. And then Phil also let people know that uh the Xbox Series X, um, they're producing more of those, so they should be more relatively available um, than they have been in the past. Uh, but we'll see on that one. When I went to the store the other day, there was there was none in stock. Not that I was needed one. I just wanted to. I was out of curiosity. I was looking at it at PS fives, just to see. Um, and there were there was only one S actually in stock. And usually there's quite a few of those. So, uh, and of course that brought us to the Starfield Direct, uh, which we've already kind of voiced our opinions a little bit on on it. Uh, but some added things. That we got on there, uh, they gave us more details about how you can um, can actually customize your ship, yeah, uh, and how detailed some of that that part of it is. Um, they talked about how the skills and leveling up worked, as well as uh, they showed the collector's editions and stuff, and the watch that they created that'll attach to your phone. I mean, I've I've got one of those. Yeah. Why not just give me a smart watches are a thing that already exists. Yeah, I don't I don't know why that was their flex, but it was. So it was very weird. Um 
But they did show off a good amount of the planets. They said that there's over a thousand. I doubt they planets. showed a good amount of the planets. I think they showed a planet or two or five. Well, I'm talking. I'm, ba- ba- I'm basing it on the actual atmosphere that was there. I mean, I, I, I still say five to ten is pretty quite a few. I know it's not a thousand, which would yeah, be stupid. Say, five thing. to ten out of a thousand is. Uh, still quite 100%. a few. I mean, five to ten because you know. But uh, they did show off one of the cities to um, New Atlantis, I think is what it's called. Um, they showed it off uh, like when you land and how it looks compared to some of the other planets you might go to. Um, and they do have stupid names for some of the bad characters, in my opinion. Like they've got Spacer and Spacer Punk as some of the bad guys' names. And it's just like, what the hell does that even mean? To me, that feels very Bethesda, though. <laughs> like, you got the well, Raiders yeah, and all of that stuff, like, Junkers and things. It's it's mm. Bethesda. Also, Spacer, when you said it, because I, I was playing a game while we were watching that at the same time, the first thing that popped into my mind is Spacer's Choice was one of the companies in uh, Outer World. O- Outer World. Yeah, yeah. so... They they had like a jingle. It's not the first choice. It's Spacer's choice and things like that. So that's like literally the only thing I could see in my mind when you said it <laughs> was Outer World stuff. <laughs> they, uh, they did say they had more character creation stuff, but the, one of the things I think is interesting about this is that it will like other games in the past have done have um, life paths for you to choose, so that you have different dialogue and traits and stuff based on your previous life path. I, I like I like that. I want we'll it to see work if it out actually better has than an influence in it. Yeah, like they they did that in Cyberpunk and it's kind of like you get some different dialogue based on your life path. Um but there are things like Dragon Age where you pick your previous, you know, your start state essentially and that has a pretty big bearing on how things go as far as like the uh first Dragon Age game is. So, I I kind of hope it's more like that. Where it actually matters and also, people treat you differently. Or Mass Effect, you know, you've got different stuff to come along with how your shepherd started out. I also like the fact that as you build your ship and you hire crew, they run your ship for you. So you get to basically pick who your crew is to be on there, which feels very Mass Effect-like, right? Except those are already chosen characters for you right. that you just you have to, to find. You pick your own. But this is like... You have a group of people that you can find. They said the bigger your ship gets, the more you can get. And then you make sure that you keep them happy and the lifestyle's there for for them. And then you always you do have an option as a possibility for a romantic option with any of them as well, um, because it's a game nowadays, and that's what happens. Um, so, uh, but you can also that that's the reason we saw we kept seeing in the trailer that we thought was cooperative, but it is one of the NPCs going with you to help you out. I kind of figured Bethesda liked that a lot in the in the Fallout series, so I yeah, it's not surprising that they carried that along. I would mm-hmm. I would have assumed that before I assumed co op. Th- this game just seems too big. It does. For them. It really does. I I think it's gonna like it. <sighs> like I we've been around the block a lot, and this game just feels like it's just too ambitious. And when it comes out, I. feel feel like it's just gonna have problems like everything else i, I well any game's gonna have problems i just matter of how the great like, like is it great is it game breaking like is it gonna be I'm thinking fallout 76 level i don't think it's gonna be that bad i think you're dealing more with cyberpunk level pc wise yeah um you think it's gonna I, come out that good yeah i do i think it's gonna come out that good because a lot of it's on the server side man if only I could be that hopeful these days, but we will yeah. find out in just a couple of months. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be like the you know PlayStation Four, Xbox One version. Of I Cyberpunk. just think I think it's like too big. Like there's just so much, thousands of components for ships that you're yeah. going to be moving freely through, thousands of variety of random. Unless you're going to literally, everyone's yeah, I mean, going to be this literally game already coming across exists. This same same people every time like everybody who joins and starts playing you're going to all see the same companions because it's supposed to be randomized right the people it's single that... single player though yeah i know i'm talking yeah, about like, be... all of your companions going to be completely linear yeah the, yeah but i mean that's because it's a linear game in that respect but you're going to have but you're going to have let's say you have my understanding based on what he was saying was like let's say there's 25 options for you to meet somebody to be able to put them on your crew 
but you're only going to be able to have a max of like six or seven of those people to put on your crew. Oh yeah, yeah. That, the, that, that's it, completely like I've. I figured they were gonna go with like randomly generated style of oh, no. characters where everybody who plays the game is gonna experience it differently based on what happens in their game. Yeah. Uh, well, just, they they are be, going to like, be able just, to in that respect because you're gonna have each one of those characters, just like a lot of RPGs, have their own side missions and stuff too. So they are gonna have it different in that respect. But I'm sure there's still an overarching like plot line that's available just like you would because you're going to have to have an end game at the end of the day um i mean to an extent yeah yeah because i don't i don't think they're treating this like a, a game of service single player that would be weird yes they are you know they're going to i mean they're going to have a dlc i assume but I, but i don't know how do you like uh, people are gonna be like let's get the dlc and it's like half of like almost everybody's only visited a third of the planet's total and the rest of it's just going to go to waste sitting out. You're going to have that guy. That's the first thing that's going to be is the person that's touched every planet, right? That's the first Has one. Has somebody in No Man's Sky touched every planet? I, no, because it, there's an infinite amount of planets. Yeah, that one's procedurally generated, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's infinite. So it can just continuously generate planets for it, you. That's the reason I say this game is... No Man's Sky is a is a more massive game. And the fact that every, that, and the fact that not only that... If you've already in- discovered a planet, that planet now exists in everybody else's universe as well. In No Man's Sky. So, at some point, somebody else can land on a planet somebody else has discovered there. Where you're just dealing with a single player game. And I think a lot of it's going to be on the server side. Um, they only have server to do side, it for But one it should person. be offline, so there should be no server side for that game. I, I still think you're going to have a server side on it. On I think- Starfield? Mm-hmm. I think you're going to have because because their system is going to have to generate the space that's available. The main mechanics and everything else are going to be part of the game. You're still going to have. It's just going to it's going to help fill in the gaps. Is what's going so to do. no offline. So you think there's no offline play? Uh, there might be, but I, I doubt it. I Oof. wouldn't think so. That game would be massive. Yeah, I, that's the point. Is I mean, you would well, be dealing with like a 500 gig game if you were trying to do that. I don't. So think t- you're a typical that. Call of Duty game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Oof. You're not wrong. Like, and that's where games are going. Like, that's what I am getting out of this game. It is 500 gigs. Like, it is so fucking unbelievably big. Uh, It doesn't have a Steam page yet. I don't know. I haven't actually looked. I would guess it would. The site looks busy looking. What does it say? Does it give you system requirements? 125 gigs right now. Right now. 125 gig? That's what the space required? Yes. All right. Do you figure, we'll say 175 is probably what it'll really be on release day, is my guess. Because it'll have for day one patch and all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything has day one patch these days. There's no exception. Uh, hey, the PC Gamer is showing off PC Mario Kart. Called Stampede <laughs> Racing Royale. It's like how many Mario Kart versions do we need that are out there? Disney's got a Mario Kart version out there now too. It's free to play. The Garfield has one. Does it? Mm-hmm. Huh. Really? Yep. So who do you have? Well, I mean, I guess it's just all the different cats and Odie, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Odie. And- yeah, I was gonna say, what about the people? <laughs> it. Okay, from what I've been able to see floating around, no online. Like you'll be able to play it offline. At a hundred I mean at hundred and seventy five gig, that's not bad. I, I you, do you don't have to have not everything ambitious. has to be generated. It sounds so fucking like to be fair though, they I've seen some of the technology that people use in single player games, but this one's a first third is that if whatever way your camera is pointing is the only area that is loaded, like everything else Uh behind you gets like just deleted or removed and and, like background Ram. And then once you get so far away, it just wipes it off so that it's only loaded so much around you. And then it only like specifically loads in your face Right, uh, which which also, how are they going to? I'm be interested to see if there's a load screen 
or if there is something cinematically that is happening during the loading process. Ew, that's gross. This is your game, Paka. I think this is the Warhammer game. Oh, is it? Um, but yeah, the um, I'd be interested to see how that's handled. But we well, won't. I mean, we won't. Out. Supposedly, we'll find out in September. So. Yes. And, and then, right, but yeah, we will. We will see how this game again. Bethesda does not have the best track record right now for games. I mean, no, they just but I think this bomb. is. I think this is why Xbox is banking on uh, and and was like, look you've got to hold on to this for another year. You cannot release what the hell you've got right now in November. That's not happening. You have got to, we've got to hold on to an entire year. I think that's why it was done that way is because had they released in November, it's fallout 76, but now they fall out this year. I think it's, you're dealing with cyberpunk. Maybe I like that. Maybe. We we'll have see. specific games to give you the level of poor Game launch. Tiers. <laughs> yeah, like, don't be an initial launch No Man's Sky, but you can move up from that and be a 76, and you can move up from that and be Cyberpunk. <laughs> like, right. the tier is, is not numbered anymore. It's specific games. It's like landmarks. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Any other stuff y'all wanted to talk about? Uh, I think uh, that was really one. it, and I think uh, PC it. game stuff is done, so... um. Is it? I'm still watching another trailer. Oh, mine's just showing the... Mine just went off. Yeah, mine was just showing the end of the IGN thing. Oh, really? Mine's showing Ferocious right now. It's a giant... Uh... Okay, hey, it's sounds... a first-person shooter made with dinosaurs. Yeah, it looks like you're being... It's almost like Tomb Raider style, being attacked on a left out Do of the Do the dinosaurs island. have guns? Is this the one you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, is, no. is this it? Is this it? <laughs> no, this is not it. What is... And then they're showing another one. Oh, well, mine went oh. off, but... I think that's all of it. I think um, there were some interesting ones, and I think there was a lot of clutter, um, is what some of it feels like. Like, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of stuff where it's like, this is a mobile game? Mm okay. This is a mobile game that's getting a PC launch. Okay, why? So, it feels like some good stuff, and a lot of extra to kind of bloat and fill in the cracks. I think the Xbox, when having, I think there was one or two mobile games that were on there. I think it's weird for them to have that on there because yeah. their main thing is to push their console. When well, they're, they're about when they're to own, uh, what is it, King? So Yeah, that's true, I guess. Yeah, that's, you're right about that. Mm -hmm. so, that is uh, true. But I just, it's so weird. I'd sell off King. <laughs> I mean, they're going to have a millions. mobile games division. Uh, you know, but. That's what it is. We do appreciate everybody who hangs out with us each and every week, though. Uh, we are sorry that it took two weeks, but we did it specifically because of this week. Um, and it also allows Chicken and I to enjoy our Father's Day next Excellent. week. So, so, you know, works out good for us. Uh, but, uh, you know, we will see you in a couple weeks. And uh, make sure that you hit the little button for the subscribe and then the little button for the bell. So that way you know exactly when all this happens. For everybody to respawn, I'm Oak Tree. I'm Griff. I'm Chicken. I'm back up. Bye. See ya. Bye.